Psalm chapter number one, beginning with the first verse from the New King James Version of the Bible. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Uh -huh. And in his law, he meditates yes. day and night. and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Hallelujah. The Amen. word Amen. of the Lord Amen. is blessed. Take your time. Take your time, Christian. Take your time. For a few moments. On today. Deacon the Simpson, I want to talk to you from the subject. Take it or leave it. Amen. Amen. Take it or leave it. As a people who are striving to be more like Christ, it is our job to simply strive to be what he wants us to be uh -huh. and what he has called us to be. In the midst of striving to be what the Lord wants us to be, there may be many Unforeseen proceedings. Yeah, yeah. Many unseen <clears throat> obstacles. And we endure situations that are truly hard to handle, and sometimes they are hard to describe. Yeah. That we endure. Right. Some of the situations that we endure since the scene cause us to question what we are doing. We question why we are doing it. Uh -huh. And sometimes we question the one who called us to do it. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. However, in the midst of striving to be better servants, we want to be grounded and established in God so we can be like that tree that is planted by the rivers of living water. Come on now. And we're striving to bring forth good fruit yeah. in due season. And we do not want our leaves right. to wither. Yeah. And it should be our utmost desire that we intake as children of God causes that are sent by God. Tell your neighbor, take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. Peter, let's go who are redeemed and determined to persevere in the faith that suffering is going to come. Yeah. 
We are going to have hardships. And we are going to have difficulties. Folk that are always going to like us. They are always want, they're not always going to want to hear what we got to say, but we have to understand that we are a chosen people. Uh -huh. yeah. A royal priesthood. Yeah. A holy nation. We are God's very own possession. Yeah. Isn't it good to know that no matter what you endure, uh -huh. you are God's possession? That's yes, right. If you're sick, you are God's uh -huh. possession. Yeah. If you're struggling with the ministry right now, you are God's possession. Yeah. If folk call you everything but a child of the king, you are still God's possession. Uh -huh. For he called us individually and collectively yeah. out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Yes. We must understand, and I want to make this very clear. We are not to be like those who persecute us. Come on. We are not. Supposed to be like those who prey on us. <laughs> we are not to be striving to look more and more like the world. We, not, we should not be chasing after those who openly or secretly engage in willful sin. Amen. Amen. With that note, we should not be trying to gain godly success with worldly methods. Well, come on. Worldly methods uh -huh. are in direct opposition. Yes. Yes. To God. Yes. And when you Add worldly, a worldly approach to the body of Christ. Say what? We mess. Jesus. Say what? Yeah. Say what? Amen. When we bring our ungodly methods uh -huh. into the household of faith, the re direct result is mess. Uh, Tell your neighbor. Yeah. Take it. Or leave it. Take it or leave it. When we observe the text closely, we see that this song begins with the beatitude. Reverend Slade, it does not begin with prayer. Elder Kill, it doesn't begin with the hymn, but it begins with a statement about human existence. Ah, uh, my God. Here, in the beginning of the song, we are asked to consider the teaching that the way life is lived is directly related to how life will turn out. Uh -huh. well, are y'all with me this morning? Uh -huh. I'm trying to take it slow for you. All right. This opening, the attitude also serves as an introduction to the book. Its location as the first song is not accidental. Say what? Mm. The song is there to invite us to read the book. Yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor, say, read the book. Get the play. It's there to invite us into the book of Psalms because it is a guide for the believer to have a blessed life. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. yes. The first song serves 
as an entrance into the entire book. And it lets the original reader or hearer know that those who truly desire to worship the Lord must embrace his law. Yeah. For the readers of the original text, the law is what we call the Torah, or the first five books of our Bible. These are God's covenant instructions. He's a covenant making God. A covenant keeping God. And a covenant sustaining God. These are his instructions as it pertains to his agreement. Somebody say his agreement. Because sometimes we think it's our agreement. It's his agreement with his creation. Come on. The song takes topics from the Proverbs mm. and makes them the subject of songs. Mm. Remind us of us, oh right? God. Oh my God. The reason for this is that those reading and singing the songs will own its value. God wants us to own the value of his word. Uh -huh. He wants us to own the value of what he says. He wants us to own the value of what he's telling us to do and telling us not to do. The writer's goal is that the reader or singer would desire to embrace the Torah. God, he wants his people to embrace his word. Uh -huh. To the problem with the church is that we don't embrace his word. Yeah. Coming Sunday after Sunday has become a ritual. Yeah. And we've lost the fear and reverence of God. Yeah. And we have failed after centuries to embrace his word. Uh -huh. But also, not only does the writer want the reader to embrace the Torah, but the writer wants the believer to believe the Torah. So we have to own its value. Embrace the word and believe the word. Furthermore, the desire is that the reader or singer will want to live out God's moral requirements found in the Torah. Do we want to live out God's requirements found in his word? And the reason that the writer does this is so that we all can have hope. Say we all can have hope. See, it's not enough for us to come to hope. We need to have some hope. There's no point of coming to hope if you ain't got no hope. And our hope is not found on 100 Living Street. Our hope is found in the true and living God. It should be our joy. And I will hope Deacon Brown to be amongst the righteous. Yeah. Yeah. Furthermore, it lets all of us know at the end of the day there's really only two ways we can live. Real what? Yeah. Understand that a person should live their life following God's instructions. Uh -huh. For us, we got the entire Bible and we must live to be examples of God's grace and mercy. Uh -huh. What we should not do 
is be chasing after folks or taking advice from folks who reject God and reject his instructions. When we examine the text on today, we grasp that those who claim to love, love the Lord and are diligent, diligently working for the Lord must do one thing. Delight in the law of the Lord. This simply lets us know that God's people must be loyal and found following him. And this loyalty supersedes, I want you to hear me, it supersedes any other loyalties that you have in your life. Come on. Tell your neighbor, say, God comes first. Come Tell your other neighbor, say, God comes first. These first three verses in Psalm 1 instruct us how to live a life of blessedness or a life full of happiness no matter what we come across. The exegetical process for breaking down the scripture is really quite simple. We want to be blessed a happy and to do this, we must live in a state of intentionally, intentionally trying to be righteous and trying to be holy. So our righteousness and our holiness must be intentional. That means we must be pressing ourselves day in and day out to get it done. We can't take our foot off the gas. We have to keep pressing our way towards the mark. The believer should be striving to live righteous and holy. Not only that, the influential company we regularly keep should not be that of those who are contrary to the word of God. We must not try to live as believers while pursuing influences that are from non-believers. Amen, lights. Amen. Amen. I don't have to delete, delete so folk out your phone. The psalmist <laughs> lets us know that one who desires to be happy or blessed in God should not strive to advance him or herself with the counsel from those they know don't love God. We ought to get our guidance directly from him. Also, I want you to hear me closely. We are not to be found in fellowship, and I made that word up. We are not to be found in fellowship with those who are intentionally not in fellowship with God and are not striving to live holy. Amen. Amen. Furthermore, let us internalize the fact that we are not to surround ourselves with people who feel that it is okay to disrespect our Lord and to disrespect our King. But we should be around folk who take God seriously. And Sister Robinson, we need to be around some folk that take pleasure in the word of God. I'm not talking about folk that just carry their mouth. I need somebody with a messed up Bible. 
a marked up Bible. Somebody that knows what I say is the Lord. I can order me a pretty Bible from Amazon. But I need somebody that's going to talk to me and tell me what thus said the Lord. I'm going through what most of the Bible says. Trust in the Lord. I'm dealing with my enemies that said, love your neighbor as yourself. I need some folk around me that's going to tell me what God wants me to know. But they said, what are the steps to prosperity which is defined as true blessings no matter what takes place in our lives. Number one, hear me closely. The believer must have discernment when it comes to those they admire, seek to emulate, imitate, or be like. You see? Anything? The believer must have discernment when it comes to those they admire and seek to emulate, imitate, or be like. Discernment, my brothers and my sisters, is the ability to judge well by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Understand the guidance we seek should be from God and those connected to God, which means we need to be looking for good fruit. When it comes to the company that we keep, Verse 1 tells us, blessed is the person who walks not in the counsel of those who are ungodly. The key words there are walk not. This lets the believer know the company that we entertain or seek to be entertained by for growth not evangelism to be those who are godly. Striving to live holy and willing to build up the company that they keep in God. Yeah. Don't you understand? There's a difference. Somebody will have this question. There's a difference between the crowd that aids in your nourishment as you grow in Christ and the crowd you seek to draw to Christ. Because the Bible says we are to be in the world, yet not of the world. When it comes to us drawing those to Christ. But understand, darkness has no fellowship, light has no fellowship with darkness within the body of Christ. Point number one, the believer must have discernment when it comes to those they admire, seek to emulate, imitate, or be like. Number two, when we seek association with others, it should be godly association. Uh -huh. A godly association of fellowship and fellowship. Godly association a fellowship and fellowship is what we should seek to engage in. We should be striving to be around folk that are pursuing uprightness. That are striving to be righteous. And doing their best to move forward in God and engaging in ethical behavior that lines up and is ordained by the word of God. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. 
Verse 1 tells us, blessed is the person who stands not in the path of sinners. Remember, the guilty by association. If everybody in the crowd commits murder, and you just there, guess what? You're going to jail too. Okay. Guilty by association. That's tough. But don't we want to be guilty by association when it's a good thing? Yeah. Hope Missionary Baptist Church fed the homeless and did the symptom was there. They went up to the rehabilitation center and Reverend Slater was with them. They were out there making sure the needs of the community was met and Deacon Westbrook was with them. We should be guilty by association when it comes to the things of God. The believer must have discernment when it comes to those they admire, seek to emulate, imitate, and be like. Number two, when we seek association with others, it should be godly association, a fellowship, and a fellowship. But last but not least, we are to do our best to surround ourselves uh -huh. with those uh -huh. who are intentionally respectful of God yeah. and show reverence uh -huh. to our God. Yeah. We must realize in the midst of all we encounter, we are known by the way that we decide to take. Yeah. We are known by the company that we surround ourselves with. Uh -huh. We are known by how we operate and navigate. We are known by the words we utter and we are known by our silence. But if we want to be blessed in this life, and in the next life, we must be present in the company of the God. We must be found in fellowship with the righteous. Be surrounded by those who reverence our God. If we are going to experience a life rooted in the resurrection, of Jesus Christ, we are going to now have to be connected to a different vein. We must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the Word of God. At times, we may be conflicted, but we must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the Word. Situations may bring us despair, but we must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the word. Tragedies and occurrences, they may seem fierce, but we must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the word. Sickness may have devastated us and changed our way of life, but we must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the word. We may find ourselves doing the work all alone, but we must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the word. We may be dealing with putting our lives together and we didn't mess it up, but we must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the word. Now I'm coming down your street, you must be excited and unwavering when it comes to the word. We may feel despair from generational issues, but we must be excited and unwavering. 
association, a fellowship, and fellowship. And last but not least, we do our best to surround ourselves with those who are intentionally respectful of our God and show reverence to our God. You can take it. Yeah. Believe it. Go to the church, though.